Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. Hi, welcome back. I'm excited now to talk you through some of the latest advancements in Copilot Studio and bring it to life through one of the features called Deep Reasoning. So we're going to use one of the use cases called an RFP agent for a sales scenario. So every time a sales team uh, gets a request for a proposal to come in about a project that maybe we want to sell our products to, our agent is going to help take all of that information, look across our product portfolio, um, put together a response, and then send that back to the user so they can then review and send it to the customer. So as easy as that, but I want to show you how powerful it is when you have an agent doing it for you autonomously. Okay, so we're in Copilot Studio right now, and you can see the list of agents that I've created in the past. So for this demo, we're going to open up the request for proposal agent. So we'll give this a second, and what you're going to see is a series of instructions. So we're gonna walk through each of the components of what this agent does, and then we'll bring it to life to see it in action. So as I kind of mentioned, the RFP agent uh, looks for customer requests sent via email, so that's its trigger. And then it will follow a set of instructions. So the number one is that the email, when it's received from the customer, it will start to retrieve the information about that customer from Salesforce. So insert whichever CRM that you want to use, you can see that there's a level of integration there. And so the agent knows what to look for in terms of the opportunity name to match the product. Then secondly, the agent needs to know what is it comparing its information to? So when it's looking for the RFP response, it needs to know about the product specification document as an example, uh, and the primary source of information about, for example, compliance and governance, the, and the policies that we need to follow by or abide by as a company, but then also the project plan, so the timeline, the cost, and the breakdown as well. So once we've got all of that information, then we're gonna use the brand new reasoning capabilities. Um, so you can see here, point three, use reasoning to create. Now that's the magic words to then call upon our new deep reasoning feature. So for this, it's gonna bring all of that information together and use an advanced model uh, to review and put a comprehensive proposal together for the customer based off all of that information, making sure that we put all the requirements in and you can even instruct it to put it in markdown so it puts it in the right appropriate format for your needs. Then finally, it's gonna take all of that and it's gonna to put together a document and then send it in, into Microsoft Teams for a seller to then review, add edit, edits as needed, and then get that sent to the customer. So as easy as that, um, that's what's gonna happen for this RFP agent. But first, let's actually look in, under the hood and see what else is as part of this agent. So you can see we have the new orchestration on. So this is called generative orchestration. It's now generally available for all customers. So what this allows you to do is that in real time, when the agent is working, it will dynamically pick the best components, so the best knowledge, the best actions to complete that task. So it looks across the descriptions of all of these components, and then the large language model picks those and slots them together to complete that task. We've got our analytics, so we can see how the agent's performing, and we can go even deeper if needed be. We've got all of our knowledge. So this is what our agent's grounded on, like we mentioned, the project plan, the product specifications, and you can add whatever information that you'd like as well. So you can see public websites, Dataverse if you're using Dynamics 365, and many other third-party connectors as well. So once you're happy and you've grounded it in the data and the knowledge that you need to know, these agents obviously need to take action on your behalf as well. They're not just answering questions, they're actually doing things for you. So you can see that we have a new agent flow here that's gonna create the proposal file and post it into Teams. And you can also see the get opportunities record where we mentioned it's gonna be integrating with Salesforce. Again, similar to knowledge, you can pick out all of the different actions depending on what else you would like to add. It might be additional agent actions. It might be an action from one of our 1,500 plus um, data connectors that are out of the box. So really you can add as many actions that are applicable for your specific scenario. Okay, and then you're gonna notice this new box as well, which is part of the general, general availability of autonomous agents which is our trigger. Now, because this agent is an autonomous agent, it's not gonna start its work based off a chat event. For example, when someone asks in a, in a chatbot experience, can you help me with this? For this scenario, it's looking across our emails. So when an email arrive that arrives that's appropriate for the RFP, then that's when it's gonna begin its work. Again, you can look across all the different connectors and pick some that may work for you. For example, running every week, it might be when a certain event happens in one of your uh, line of business applications so you can pick that works for you. So it essentially means your agents are no longer just chat based, they can be autonomous behind the scenes working independently. And so there's some of the main components that you're gonna to wanna to know before you get started. 
But let's quickly talk about how you turn on deep reasoning. So if we go to settings and we go to generative AI, you'll see this brand new feature that pops up called using deep reasoning. So all you have to do is tick that toggle on and then you, you'll see the tips on how to, as we just mentioned in the instructions, to mention to say use reason in the actual terminology in that instruction set for when it's supposed to be used. Great, and that's all you need to do to then implement this model. And so what I really wanna emphasize is that the models are the commodity. It's the system that is able to call multiple different models as needed is where the value lies. So let's bring this to life and let's start and create a trigger. So what we can do, we can test the trigger right here. So I've sent some emails in the past that have initiated this workflow and I'm gonna go start testing. Now the value of these experiences and these autonomous agents is that you can watch them in real time do its work and do its process. So now we can see in this activity map, it's got the uh, the opportunity record from Salesforce. You can see it's pulled that specific um, opportunity and the information. It's gone to our knowledge source just here. So it's using all three documents just as I instructed, which which is perfect. So even if it chose to use different instruction, uh, different knowledge for another scenario, you can see which ones it's picked, which is perfect. And then it's gonna spend some time reasoning with Azure OpenAI. So this is using the brand new Azure OpenAI 01 model to do a lot more deep reasoning. And what this essentially means is that it spends more time thinking as opposed to rushing the decision. It includes more variables and it's a much more well thought through process to make sure it's as compelling and, and appropriate and uh, accurate as, you're, as you need. So you can see here, this is the sort of information it's, it's put together based off that proposal. So I can just click through and scroll if I needed to. And that all looks good. And then what I can see, it's finishing off that process. So what it started to do is call that agent flow and then put together the report and post it directly inside of Microsoft Teams. So for this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch over to my Microsoft Teams experience. Okay, so I'm in my Microsoft Teams experience. You can see now it's 5.13 p.m. and I've had a brand new response from our agent workflow. And you can see it's saying, here's the RFP questionnaire I've put together for you. And I can easily click that link. And based off that process, you can see it's formatted all of that deep reasoning based off all of that data and knowledge that we just spoke about. And now I'm pretty much there as a seller. I managed to save my time so many hours of looking through my product portfolio, looking through the compliance processes and everything else I need to consider. And you can see it's put together the intelligent uh, product information. It's even suggested an implementation uh, program as well. And even then uh, a cost breakdown as needed. So this is perfect for someone as a seller that needs to help operate at scale and, re and respond to as many customers as possible. Okay, so we're back in Copilot Studio again. You've just seen that RFP agent in action. Now I wanna call out a couple more capabilities um, before we close here. So when we're adding actions, we also have the ability to be able to create prompts that act as specific tasks within that agent flow as well. For example, if I drop down here and go to new actions, you can see I can add my flows, my connectors, my, my skills, my REST APIs. But if I go into this prompt experience, I can easily then create a prompt for a specific scenario. But the exciting part is if I navigate to settings, you're also gonna see that we can also provide additional models that you can pick for down at the prompt level. So what you're seeing now, we spoke about deep reasoning operating at the agent level, but it can also have a bring your own model experience directly at the prompt uh, level as well. So you've got that level of customization no matter what level of the hierarchy of your agent that you're performing at. So if I wanted to create a prompt that summarizes te text, extracts information, classifies, you name it, one of our AI builder models, we can do that exactly here, call our specific model, and then plug this directly into our agent's capabilities, which is super exciting. Now, the final thing I want to show you is our new agent flows. Now, imagine that when you're using an agent that's using generative orchestration, it can deal with that level of ambiguity. It's great at dealing with non-deterministic uh, workflows. And what that means is that when there's not a single path that's the same every time, it has some level of reasoning, thought process, and needs to orchestrate the right set of steps to do that. But there's gonna be times when you want a specific set of steps that are always the same. They follow this rigorous steps and you know that you can deal with accuracy. Now that's where agent flows come into play. And that's where you can create them that they can operate standalone, similar to an automation or workflow 
But then you can also add these as skills within the within the agent. So you get the best of both worlds. You have an agent that can reason and orchestrate and then call these specific flows as needed to provide that level of control. So you can see if I jump into the designer, I can easily go through, I could use natural language to design that first flow. For this one, you can see when an email arrives for each scenario, get the attachment, run an AI builder model here that's using GPT. And then for each of those conditions, for example, if it's true, create a file and a sharing link and then post it inside of Teams. So you can see how this one's following that, those specific set of steps, as opposed to the agent that then creates those flows at runtime to then do that. So you've got that perfect balance. Okay, so that's the demo for the RFP scenario. But of course, this is just there to inspire so many different things that you could use your agents for, for deep reasoning that, that can help with, for example, market analysis, reviewing contracts, and, and ex of course, RFP scenarios as well. This is your chance to come up with some great scenarios. And I really can't wait to see the sort of things that you're gonna be building, both from an agent perspective and your agent flows with your creative workflows. So thank you for the time. I'm excited to see what you're going to get up to.